everybody, and welcome. It's the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today I'm going to be answering a bunch of questions that you guys have sent in. So, as you're listening to this, if you have a question or a comment, just know you can send it to IHateMattWall at gmail.com, or if it's a question um, based off of any of the videos I have on YouTube or anything like that, you can just leave it in the comments there and I will hit it up. Oh yes, five stars. Yes, five stars. It is your duty to give this podcast five stars. So get on that. Um, also get on joining the goddamn motherfucking anarchy crew. That's the thing you need to do. So while I'm all ready to go, let's get into the fucking shout outs. So again, MacArthur Park out now. Fuck off. So I want to give a big thank you to my folks over on Patreon. Michael, Deborah, Cedar, Harry. Thank you guys so much. I love you. And then for the thank you crew. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, J.H. Thank you, Britt. You guys are awesome. A.M., come back. And then um, for those big swinging motherfuckers over there in the Anarchy Crew, I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Jessica, to Caitlin, to Shaylin, to Andrew and to Alan. I'm trying to go up and down on here. And thank you to the number one chappie, the SDG. Thank you guys so much. Um, I hope you guys are getting as much from me as I'm getting from you. You guys are awesome. Bam, I love you guys. So, questions. Today we're gonna go over questions. And not only are we gonna go over questions, um, I might get into a little bit about motivation. Um, I just did the uh, live stream, the Members Only Anarchy Crew live stream, and we talked a little bit about motivation, and considering it's happening with the Anarchy Crew, maybe I should start with talking about that with you guys. I think I will. Let's, let's start with that. I don't know if you guys are into astrology or anything weird like that. I'm not really into it, but I am kind of into it because I hear about it. And then I'm like, oh, that is actually relevant to me right now or something like that. So whatever. What I have noticed is that most of the people in the Anarchy Crew, the last couple months, and more so now than ever, have been talking to me about how they've kind of lost motivation for writing. And I, too, not that I've lost motivation to write, I just haven't been able to sit down to write. So a lot of that is because of the holidays and because of, like, things beyond our control. Like, things keep happening. Like, people keep showing up. Families doing this. Families doing that. People need to get together for this event, for that event, the whole fucking thing. Now that it's all wrapping up and we're going to be going back to normal... A lot of us have been so out of it for the last month that we don't know how to necessarily go right back to normal. And we don't know what steps to take. So I'm going to give you just like a quick little checklist of things that you can do. Um, and if you're a part of the Anarchy Crew, we just had an hour-long live stream about this. If you missed that, Anarchy Crew, go back and watch it. So first and foremost, you need to make time. However you do it, you need to make the time. Whether it is 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, a half hour, 45 minutes, whatever. Just make the time. Go, okay, tomorrow at 10 a.m., from 10 a.m. to 10.07, I'm going to sit down with a blank screen or a blank piece of paper, and I'm just going to write. It doesn't matter what you write. You just have to start the process. So start writing like this paper is really fucking white or man, look at my fingers type. I'm typing type, type, tap, 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 just start. And then everything will start to flow. Just don't stop writing. Just keep writing and keep writing and keep writing and keep writing and something will fucking happen. For those of you who don't know, I don't know if it's been published. I think it has. I'd have to go look, but I have a story called don't stop. And I wrote it because I needed to write, like I needed to go. So I just started typing and I'm like, I'm not allowed to stop typing. I have to just keep typing no matter what. And as I was typing, I came up with a story where 
I was like a slave among all of these other humans who were forced to sit at typewriters. And there were these creatures, otherworldly creatures, walking back and forth through the um, aisles of us sitting there chained to a computer typing, making sure that we didn't stop typing. And if we did stop typing or if we slowed down, these monsters were going to kill us. And so there's no paragraph breaks. I don't even think there's a period in it. It's just like a continuous thing that goes. And I don't know how many pages it goes for. It might just be like two pages. And then like during it, I'm like, but I'm getting really tired. I feel like I'm slowing down. And now I feel, and then it just stops. And so like the reader then is like, oh shit, this person typing was killed because they weren't keeping up with everybody kind of thing, you know? And that just came to me while I was trying to keep typing. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. If that is a good writing prompt for you, take that idea and do something with it and see what you get. That's kind of scary and fucking weird, am I right? So that's the first thing. What other things did I talk about in there? Shit, I can't remember the second thing. So I'll tell you the other things. Because I don't write anything down because I'm a fucking idiot, obviously. But some of the other things were, if you've been really stressed out and um, you feel like overwhelmed with the holidays and everything like that, you have to understand that there are certain things that you have no control over. And you get to decide how you're going to let that affect your life. So if like family has been driving you crazy, the holidays have been driving you crazy, bills have been driving you crazy, all this other stuff, your bills are going to be there. There's nothing you can do about those but pay them. Okay. So you either need to pay them or you need to just go, those are there. I have no control of them now. They're here. So, so what the fuck? The holidays are over. I don't need to be freaked out about it anymore. I can move on. My family is my family. I need to move on. Like there are certain things that you have no control over. So letting those things have power over you crushes your fucking will to fucking do anything. You know what I'm saying? So you have to understand that you don't have control over these things and be okay with that and kind of cut that off and go, you know what? I could be worrying about you, but you're going to be here whether I worry about you or not. So I'm just going to start writing. I'm just going to do the thing. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing. Um, another thing to do is to keep it simple. And this is like one of my rules all the fucking time. Just write whatever the fuck you want to write. Don't worry about editing it. When a few days go by and you look at what you have, just start taking shit out that doesn't need to be there. Okay? Cut the fat. Cut the fat. Cut the fat. Keep it simple. Plain vanilla. The whole fucking thing. Don't worry about making sure everything is fucking right all the time. You know what I'm saying? Just do the thing. And if you keep doing the thing, good things will fucking happen. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to think of what else there was. There was the schedule, the time. There was the worries about everything. And then keeping it simple. Um, I, this wasn't one of the things, but somebody in the live stream asked a question saying that, like, I just, I'm exhausted. I don't have the time to fucking do anything. So what I said she should do is just have her phone on and do the voice memos and just any time she has a moment to herself, whether it's driving in the car, whether it's um, going for a walk, whether it's sitting in the bathroom, whatever it is, however long that thing is going to be, just turn on your fucking voice memos, hit record, and just talk. Talk, talk, talk. Same thing with like, don't stop typing. Just keep talking. Talk about like everything, your feelings, like how you're feeling about everything, and then do your senses. Like, what am I seeing? What am I smelling? What am I touching? What am I tasting? Like the whole fucking thing. Like I could feel the fucking floor under my feet and shit like that. And do that and just keep talking, describing things, figuring everything out. And then by the end of the week, you're going to have a ton of shit you can work with and then go through and see if there's any lines in there that you could use for anything. You know what I'm saying? Put something together like that. So that, I, I can't remember everything I talked about, but hell, if you join the Anarchy Crew, you can go watch that live stream. It's archived. You'll be able to find it. So hopefully that will help some of you guys get through any kind of like weird motivation issues you might be having or just like time scheduling. Like seriously, like time management is such a huge part of fucking writing. Like if you can manage your time, like you could fucking take over the world. 
Like, I swear to God, that's all you fucking need to know how to do is manage your fucking time. <sighs> okay. So anyway, with that said, let's move into some questions. A bunch of people talking about Naked Lunch, and you might not know why, so I will tell you. Um, I'm doing a read-along uh, with of Naked Lunch by William S. Burroughs with Alan from YouTube, and his channel is um, Big Hard Books and Classics. Alan uh, Mahan, I think is how you pronounce his last name. He was in The Last Blood Rag. So if you have always wanted to read Naked Lunch but didn't want to do it alone, um, that's what we're doing this month. So jump over to my YouTube page, and um, every week I'll be doing little like wrap-ups of Naked Lunch and talking a little bit about it. Let's see here. Someone, someone asked about how to start a publishing company. That is a big topic. So I'm going to be doing some videos on my YouTube page about that. And it's going to be like almost like a series of shit. So if you are interested in that, jump on over there. And then if after I'm done with doing those videos, if I feel like there's a way I could like put it into one little podcast episode, I'll fucking do it. Oh man, I, I don't understand any of these questions here. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Oh, I'm going through um, some old comments, and um, this is from Lisa. I still can't believe I wrote poetry. That was such food for my soul. So grateful I found you this year. That is so sweet. So I'm glad you found me too. How come I never saw this stuff? There's a bunch of these comments I um, never saw. So here are some questions. Um, I can't find who sent it, and I kept thinking I'd be able to find it. But I got a question about book covers. And um, when you're making a book cover, what should the DPI be? Like the pixels per square inch kind of thing. Digital pixels or whatever. And if you're making an ebook that is going to be downloaded onto Kindles and shit like that, or even if you're doing like EPUBs or even PDFs or anything like that, I wouldn't make it any bigger than 72 um, DPI because if you make it any bigger than that, the file for sending it is going to be so fucking huge. And a lot of times um, certain email providers, if you send a thing that's too big, they won't take it. And so that sucks and causes fucking issues. And then um, with Amazon, I can't remember exactly what the cut is, but there are some books, they will charge you a um, delivery service fee if the images are too big. So if you have like a picture book or something like that, and all the images are like 300 DPI, um, it's going to, like your profit is going to be smaller. But if you are making like a paperback book, I would say probably 300 is the way to go. And that way, uh, it'll look as good as you could make it. Like when you're making t-shirts or stickers or anything like that, those should always be 300 DPI as well. So um, if it's a physical copy of something, 300. If it's not, you could pass with 72, okay? So that is just um, one of those things for you. Uh, let me see here. This is all quite fascinating. So next question. Man, my hair is looking fab Um, Next question. Um, this is from Chris B. Asking me, what do I look for when I'm betting on a horse? Because if you guys don't know, I like to bet on horses. And so um, I talk a little bit about it on YouTube. But I will just do a very quick um, thing right now. First off, whatever track you are going to start betting at, start to understand that track because every track is different. The weather is different at every track. The ground holds moisture different at every track. So you need to figure out, um, I would say find a track you like, whether you're betting online and you're watching on the computer or something like that, or if it's a place you could go to. But just stick with that track. Don't think because you could nail it at Santa Anita that you'll nail it at La Salle or that you'll nail it at Turf Paradise or Golden Gate or Gulfstream or Fairgrounds or whatever. You know, 
like find a track. Then I would say class drops. Class drops, class drops, class drops are always the way to go most of the time. Okay. Now, what, what I mean by this is if a horse, if you're looking at its past performances and you say, okay, so this horse um, was an allowance company and it was coming in fifth and fourth, but then it dropped to um, optional claiming, you know, like, oh, okay, well, that's cool, right? Um, but when you saw that one, it also was only running fourth or fifth or something like that. This horse will probably not win many races, okay? It's a pack horse. It likes to run with the pack. So that's not like a winner horse. But if you see, like, this horse was an allowance company and it came in sixth and then went to um, op, uh, optional claiming company and now it's in fourth and then went down to, um, like, from an OC50 to, like, an OC30, and then came in second. Like, if that's still dropping and it is progressing, that's a good horse to go with if the drop is still there. But if it's dropping and nothing's changing, then, like, that's not going to be a good bet. But if it's the first drop from up high to a lower class, take take the risk. I always take the risk on that. Um, the only time... I put money on a horse that's moving up in class is if it's kicking ass where it's going, if it's been winning. And if it's doing a big jump and it won by a neck, I'm not going to bet that horse. But if it's last race, it won by like two or three or more lengths. Yeah, I'll put money on that fucker. Um, I would also stay away from... Um, a horse that just broke its maiden. So it has a maiden win. And now it's the next race. Most horses. Like when a horse is first running against other winners. It usually doesn't do good. Now this isn't all the time. It's just usually. There are so many things like this. But the thing you have to remember. Animals are fucking alive. And they do fucking things. Whenever they feel like doing things. They're, it's, it's a fallible thing. You know. But you just have to go and look at it and see what is the least fallible fucking thing that can happen here, you know? So, like, last weekend, um, the Santa Anita meet started up again, and I, I like Santa Anita. Um, and I won $98 on Sunday and then lost $10 on Monday. Um, and then today, I won $64. So... Um, and I don't bet big. I usually just do like $2 bets, dollar exact as, um, 50 cent pick threes. Like if I'm doing stuff like there, there were been times in my life where I'm like, Oh, I'm going to bet more. I'm going to do all this other stuff. And that's fun, you know, but like when, when you lose and if you're putting a lot of money down, it hurts, you know? So the age old adage <clears throat> only bet if you can afford to lose the money. Like if you're betting because like you need to pay your bills, that's always a dangerous place to be, dude. So hope that helps you. That was some good shit actually. So yeah, you're welcome. All right. So here is a question. This is from Julia. This question says, you mentioned how you would write a book within a few days in order to serialize it. I would be interested in that process and also the difference between writing a book for serializ serialization versus one you write without that intention. Okay, so there's a couple things here. One, I didn't write a whole book in a few days and then serialize that book. I was writing um, serialized episodes. And, um, this question is in reference to like black star Canyon and stuff like that, that I was doing before. And the thing here is, is that those were, for those of you who don't know, I will kind of go into it with you here. I like writing on deadlines. It pushes me. It makes me like really fucking go get it. So when I was doing black star Canyon, I would 
write the book or the episode, I would start writing it on like Thursday or Friday, write it through the weekend, Sunday night, start editing it, send it, send it to someone else to edit as well. And then um, when it was being looked over, so now we're on Monday here, um, I would make sure that the book cover was done. And I'd get the episode back. And the episodes were anywhere from 10,000 to 17,000 words. Okay. And I'd get those back and then put it up on Tuesday. Like put it out um, on Tuesday. Take Wednesday off to just like relax and then start again Thursday. And that was like the cycle, you know. That was awesome for me. I loved doing that like that. Now the difference between serializing something and just writing a novel is when you're writing a novel you typically aren't thinking of like the punch of how everything has to fucking land like when you have a serial like that opening has to be so fucking action packed and like grab you and pull you in you know you need to do that so you need to like drop someone in the middle of the action right when it starts and every chapter you have has to end on a cliffhanger. And then you can't pay that off right away. So when I was doing Black Star Canyon, it was easy because there were so many characters. So I could like leave someone with a cliffhanger and then not come back to it for five or six chapters. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that is really easy. And if, if this is like confusing for you and you're like, I don't really understand what you're talking about. Like watch any soap opera or watch... Um, I don't know, like shows like, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of a show, like The Sopranos, okay? Watch these and look at how many different scenes there are, like how many chunks of things, like we're with this character now, and now this is happening to them. And write it down in a notebook, go, okay, so in this part, this character is doing this, okay, and then we cut to this character, and this character is doing this, and then we cut to this character, and this character is doing this. Do that on a couple shows you like and see how it goes. And I would say do this with books, but for some reason, whenever I tell people to use books to try to figure out how to serialize stuff, they can't figure it out. So um, this has always been an easier thing. So check that out and just look at the formula for it. And once you get how to like grab people's emotions and stuff, it becomes really, really easy to do that. But when you're writing a novel, you're usually thinking like big picture story. And you're not thinking of how to get people excited to turn each page. You just hope they do. So that's the difference there. James asks, do you recommend craft books or craft podcasts like this one? Here is how this goes. I mean, obviously the question was longer, but that was the gist of it. So this is how this works. If you are writing and like, we're all insecure and shit. Like we're all insecure creatures. I, I've done videos about this before. We're all insecure creatures, the whole fucking thing. But when you start writing, like naturally, because we're insecure, we are going to want to make sure what we're doing is right. And what we're doing is correct. And we're going to want to better ourselves all the time. So what ends up happening is, is we find these craft books or podcasts like this one and um, try to come to them to try to learn new shit, okay? To try to up our game a bit. This is amazing and awesome if you are good doing that. But what I have found nine times out of 10 is when people do those things, they pick up craft books and stuff and they pick up like different podcasts to subscribe to and they start hearing all this stuff. Their writing actually gets worse and um, it starts to come down a bit. And the reason for this isn't because what the books or podcasts are saying isn't good you start writing worse because you're second guessing everything you're doing okay so this podcast for example if after listening to this podcast 
you find that your writing like is getting worse, you're having a harder time writing, stop listening to this show. It's not working for you. Okay. There are other shows out there that might work for you. There's other books out there that might work for you. You might read a book and go, oh my God, this just like unlocked everything. It honestly that will probably never happen, but let's just say. And you're like, oh man, I could I could totally fucking write now. If that's the case, good. But if you pick up a book on craft on how to write or how to do this or how to do that, and you suddenly feel like your writing is like not up to snuff or it's getting worse or it's just harder to sit down to fucking type, get the fuck away from that book because it's just fucking with your head. The best time, I think, for someone to read a craft book is after they finished a draft. So if you're writing a novel, write the novel, then pick up a craft book before you start editing your novel. Go through it and see like if there's anything in that book that rings true to you. And then after the writing's done, because you already wrote your fucking novel, then look at it and use the things you found in this craft book and see how many how much of that stuff could actually fucking help you. But if you do it the other way, read the book first and then do the work, you'll a lot of times, more times than not, your work is going to suffer because of how much you will fucking second guess yourself. Okay? So that's just one of those fucking things. I've done it a hundred fucking times where I dude, I have picked up every fucking on writing book you could fucking imagine. And all it's done was made it harder for me to fucking finish something because I was constantly fucking worried about it. This year, actually, I'm going to be putting out a um, craft book on poetry. And some of you are going, you're the last person who should write a fucking craft book on poetry. Well, when the book comes out, take a look at it and then tell me. Um, cause it's, it's more of a motivational tool than anything else for you. But anyway, so that's the thing. There were some podcasts I used to listen to that I loved because like, I just, so there, there was so much information coming out of it, but I realized every time I sat down to write, cause at the end of the episode, it would say, now sit down and write. Like that was what they would say at the end of the fucking episode. And I'd sit down to write and I'd go, God, I feel like garbage now. Like, this is awful. I don't want to fucking do anything now. And I had to, like, force myself to not listen to that podcast because it was my favorite podcast for a very long time. And um, I just realized every time I was done listening to it, I either never wrote or would sit in front of a blank screen. So hopefully when you listen to this show... Like, afterwards, you're like, fuck yeah, I'm going to fucking write someone that's going to be fucking good as shit. And you get all fucking angry and fucking, like, passionate. Okay? That's what I want to hear from you guys. Um, But, yeah, if you ever, like, listen to this show and then you're like, I can't do anything, then this show is not for you. And I'm really sorry that you've wasted your time. And hopefully, once you do some cool shit, you can come back and listen and hopefully everything will be good. So, I don't fucking know. So... That, I guess, is the episode. Um, I had other questions, and I don't know where I put them. I can't remember if they were in a... If I put them in a fucking folder in my email or what, but I don't know. Hopefully, this was um, good. If you have any questions, um, send them to IHateMattWall at gmail.com, and I will read those not on the next episode, but the following episode, because that's how we're doing this now. We're going to have, like me telling you what's what about some stuff and then me answering questions so um butt plugs let's get to it and the butt plugs are gonna be really easy this week guys i'm gonna keep them all nice and lewd for you here go over to ihatemountwall.com to find out all about everything that i do Go to my Etsy shop so you can pick up my chat books or get your issue with a blood rag or anything like that. Go on to Amazon if you want um, paperbacks or ebook versions of my books. 
And other than that, just keep buying my stuff. Keep supporting me. I really appreciate that you're doing it. I love you for it. Um, if you want to submit something to the blood rag, 14 lines or less, to IHateMattWallGmail.com. Make sure in the subject line you write blood rag submission. And just fucking keep typing hard, guys. That, that's what you're supposed to do. So just do that thing. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.